of the blue corner. He's wearing black with gold and weighed in at 114 and a half pounds. And the Mastina Azul, El Rureta Dor. Vestido de negro con dorado, su peso es 114 libras y media. His record, 31 wins, 2 defeats, 8 wins by knockout. Su record, 31 victorias, 2 derrotas con 8 victorias por la vía del knockout. De Santiago de Chile, presentando Miguel Aguja González. His opponent across the ring, the defending champion, fighting at the blue corner. He is the first survival game, but not a guy in the Dominguez. He's wearing red, red, white, and weighed in at 115 pounds. And I see that in the middle half. El Campeon, vestido in the middle half, con blanco, su peso es 115 libras. His record, 31 wins, just one defeat. Two draws, 21 wins come by way of knockout. Su record, 31 victorias, una derrota, dos empates, con 21 victorias por la vía del knockout. Tonight, in his eighth world title defense, here is the reigning and defending IBF Junior Bantamweight Champion of the World, De Magallanes. Kaviti Philippines, Sherwin, Pretty Boy, and Kahal. The bill. A lot of nerves on that young man right now. Bernardo and Kahas has fought everywhere. He's fought in China, U.S., Australia, North Ireland. I mean, this man has no problem fighting you in your home country, wherever you're from, your hometown, it doesn't matter. Have ring world travel. That's uh, the Navy man's, you know, his, his theme. I mean, this guy is not afraid to go anywhere. No. As you mentioned, he's an international traveler. He just received a promotion to senior chief petty officer in the Philippines Navy Reserves on August 19th. So even though... He couldn't fight because of visa issues of his opponent. He still kept busy, and right. that boot camp mentality is what you can see the great shape he's in. That's right. Now, what's the pitfall of, you know, preparing? It was already a long camp that he had for November 2nd. I yeah. remember talking about that. And then next thing you know, it's postponed a whole month. What's that like, Tim? It's just maintenance, honestly. Um, he was supposed to fight, and you just got to go back, get a little rest, then get back in the gym. You know, and then just try to peak again at the, you know, peak at the, at the right time again. So, you know, his trainer is in charge of that. And he's got a trainer who he's been with uh, forever, Joven Jimenez, since his fourth pro bout in 2010. And as well for his last few fights, he's got a conditioning coach as well as a nutritionist. And you, you know, got to have that. The last couple times. He's looked a lot better because there was a point where we saw him come into one of our fighter meetings and yeah. he was done. I mean, you got to have that. A champion must have a nutritionist or someone that can, you know, cook his meals for him. And also a strict coach to work hand in hand with the trainer on the boxing as well. To the looping right hand from Miguel Gonzalez. Not a big puncher. He's only got 24% of his wins by knockout. Eight knockouts. In 31 wins for the fighter out of Santiago. I mentioned he wants to become the first male boxer from Chile to win a world title. And I mentioned the male fighter because Carolina Rodriguez, she won the female IBF bantamweight title and then vacated it. But she was Chile's first ever world champion. Yeah, you see Gonzalez not really using his jab. His attack is the body. He likes to break guys down to the body and then shoot shots up to the head. So... Expect a lot of body punching from both guys in this fight. Nice body shot right there from Nakahas. Nakahas is 
basically saying, okay, you want to go to my body? Well, I'm going to go back down. I'm going to go down to your body. We already saw that Mariaka finished the fight with a body shot at the start of this broadcast. And we see a push there from Jerwin Ancajas as round number one comes to an end. Okay. Comes from a long lineage of boxers and a boxing family. So it just runs in their blood. And together, they've gotten this far and they want to keep going further and further. For now, it's Jerwin Ancajas in the red trunks, trimmed in white, taking on Miguel Gonzalez from Santiago, Chile. You mentioned the percentage of his landed shots that are body shots. He's actually a very good boxer from the outside, but he just loves to dig to the body and, and get into a war of attrition. And that's a dangerous place to be in against a fighter like Jerwin Ancajas. Yeah, that's a place where he needs to be because Jerwin Ancajas better, has better legs, better boxing ability. So he wants to be up in his kitchen. He wants to be digging down to the body and making it rough for Encajas and not allowing him to use that southpaw angles, those southpaw angles. Do you see Encajas able to establish that jab from the outside? Yeah, when you fight against a southpaw, Bernardo, you know, one, one way to beat a southpaw is to be on top of him. You know, take those angles away, push him backwards. And if Gonzalez can push him backwards, and make make Ancajas uncomfortable, well, that's what increases, you know, his opportunity to, to win this fight. His name is El Aguja, which means the needle. So he's got to thread the needle here against Jerwin Ancajas. Get inside, use a jab, work the body, but get out of harm's way because Ancajas is a dangerous finisher. Right on the belt line was that right hand from Gonzalez. Ancajas can be hot and cold. In his last fight against Ruichi Funai, he looked spectacular. Yes, he did. And before that, you were not at all happy with his previous performance, a draw against Alejandro Santiago in his sixth title defense. No, I wasn't. I wasn't too happy. But his last, his last showing, he, you know, he showed a lot of improvement. He looked strong. He was quick. You know, he placed his shots very well, kind of like what he's doing right now. Placed his shots very well to the body and got the knockout. He's finding openings in Gonzalez and creating them and taking advantage of them as Gonzalez landed a nice right hook to the solar plexus. Got those earmuffs on, does the Chilean fighter. You see those angles create that opportunity for the right hook to the body from Jerwin Ancajas, the yeah. southpaw. Yeah, that's a nice little wrinkle right there from Ancajas. Oh. Beautiful shot right there. Look at going down to the body. And as, you, as your man leans a little bit forward, in the pocket, what does Kahas do? Lift him up with the uppercut. There's taking what the opponent gives you, and there's creating openings and opportunities, and that was the case for Jerwin Ancajas here as we close out round two of a scheduled 10-rounder with the world title. Tensions all on you, and you have to deliver at home. Deliver. That's what these two guys are trying to catch. A liver shot. <laughs> Both. Jerwin Ancajas and Miguel Gonzalez. A lot at stake for Gonzalez in his first world title opportunity. And for Ancajas, he needs to keep proving that he is an elite fighter at 115 pounds because there are a lot of big names out there for him, be it Estrada, Sorung Visay, Tony Nietes, his fellow Filipino, Kazuto Ayoka, Khalid Yafai, Chocolatito Gonzalez. A lot of talent, a lot of good fights to be made if he continues to win. Yeah, I'm seeing some maturity from Encajas. You know, he's really standing his ground, really sitting down on his oh, punches really now. Really you know, that can be contribute to, you know, his strength and conditioning. You know, and he's looking like he's getting a lot more comfortable inside the pocket. You know, he's got a nice high guard, digging down to the body. He's not running around. You know, he's just walking in the ring, using his jab. Oh, and he left there, and he... As his opponent in trouble here as Miguel Gonzalez is able to stay on his feet. But Ancaja smelled blood and goes for the body shots. A little low there with that left hook, but Ancaja's is dangerous. And but look so how short those shots are. Yeah. You know, from Ancaja's. They're nice short play shots. They're not wide. You know, so you know he's been working on this in the gym. He looks good tonight. And the other thing is. Miguel Gonzalez is making him work for it. This fighter came in here with a desire to make history for his home country. He's fighting against Ancajas with a lot of heart, but those body shots have got to wear him down. 
You die by the sword. You live by the sword. You die by, you the, die sword. by the sword. Yep. We see Gonzalez taking a lot of punishment to the body from Jerwin Ancajas, who goes downstairs once again. Nice Gonzalez. right hand there from Gonzalez. Yeah, Gonzalez had no choice but to get inside the kitchen of Ancajas because Ancajas is just too athletic for him. Too much ability. Big NBA fan. His sons are named after Kyrie Irving and Kyle Korver. And his daughter is just less than a year old, J.C. Kiera. So that's his inspiration. He keeps him back home in survival camp. But the last two fights, he's been going to the naval base to do his work and you can tell the difference in the maturity level that yeah. you've mentioned and, and his improvement in boxing a man trying to knock he trying to knock he trying to knock out gonzalez that's exactly what Encajas is trying to do he's sitting down he's right in front you know and 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 Cajas is the way he the way he normally fights he's a counter puncher that's what he likes to do he's a counter puncher bro now he wants to be first he wants to respond and he's trying to hit hard tonight he's trying to knock out gonzalez Good work from the champion, Jerwin Ancajas here in round number three with scheduled 12 rounder. Ricardo Osuna alongside Timothy Bradley, the champion. Jerwin Ancajas taking on Miguel Gonzalez in Puebla, Mexico. Ancajas now on the hunt. You mentioned it the way he closed out the previous round and now how he comes out for round four he's found his distance he's yeah. found his openings on gonzalez and he's taking advantage no he just really asserted himself that's what i like about him you know he's really asserting himself he's not just looking for just for counter shots you know he's trying to lead and he's trying to be defensive at the same time and then lead again Tim bradley being effusive with his praise of jerwin on cajas let's get this on tape <laughs> The fans in Mexico are expecting a lot more. And they're letting both fighters know here in round four. It's been an entertaining fight so far. And Cajas has a nice jab. When he uses it, it's definitely effective for him. Setting up the backhand right there. And every now and then you see Gonzalez, he'll he'll jump in there. He'll leave himself wide open and Cajas will take advantage of it. Cajas lands five of 25 jabs per round. There you see that leaping punch reminds us of Teofimo Lopez. Yeah, it was a leap. <laughs> it was a leaping punch, but typically, and Cajas would get hit with a shot like that, but he did this time. He held that phone. Going back to the jab numbers, junior featherweight average is two landed of 16 thrown. So, and Cajas is usually way above those numbers. He's keeping to that trend tonight. Likes to use that jab to set up everything, especially those body shots that he's so good at. Nice counter right there from Makahas. He saw the punch coming. You have to see the punch. If you want to avoid it, you got to look at it. You got to see it. Yeah, that's something what you've been mentioning about on Cajas is what you want to see out of a fighter is development. And yes. As the level of competition improves, you want to make sure that, that you're getting better. And after that lull he had, and, and now when we see him, and he started camp June 1st for this particular fight, which was supposed to be uh, November 2nd, you see the fact that he's a different fighter. Yes, he definitely looks like a different fighter. He's 27. He's right in the midst of his prime right now, Nardo. Right in the midst of his prime. And, and, you know, at each fight you have, you have to continue to get better and better and better. You know, it doesn't stop. You know, you have to master your craft. And I believe that Nakahas is finally in that position and probably at that point in his career right now where he's starting to master his, his craft and believe in himself and his ability. He had that lull in his career, but now it seems to be paying off, getting that ring in the Philippines leading up to this fight. And Miguel Gonzalez, well, he sparred Juan Pablo Mesa and Gonzalo Funelida in Chile. And then he went to Puerto Rico and he sparred prospect Javier Cintron. So he got really good work, especially at the tail end of his training camp, knowing that he had to step it up for this world title opportunity. When in doubt, stick out the jab. 
That's exactly what uh, Jerwin Anka has did. That's exactly what you have to do, you know, especially dead, dead spots. You know, the young fighters out there that's just, you know, sitting there posing in front of each other. Get your jab working. You know, if you get your jab working, it's going to set up things for you. Nice counter right there from Gonzalez, who I, I was watching some of his fights in Chile, and, and the Chilean commentators were saying he's so good when he boxes, but he loves to be on the inside. And right now you see his effectiveness fighting from the outside. But the fans not digging it. Nice shot to the body there. The solar plexus from Miguel Gonzalez who tries to find an angle and gets caught with a short left hook from Jerwin Ancajas. Little low with the left hook from Gonzalez. Hit the leg of Jerwin Ancajas. Quick three punch combination. Good defense from Miguel Gonzalez. See the total punches thrown so far, and Ancaja is just a lot more active, a lot more effective, and 3% more accurate so far through the first four rounds of this scheduled 12 round fight. Almost a clash of heads right there. Both guys exchanging. You know, with the Sao Paul and the Orthodox fighters. You know, the, both their power shots lined up on the same side, so there could be head clashes and their feet will be to get tangled up every now and then. So their lead feet, their lead foot, I should say. We're talking about the power punches. Ancaja is landing at a 50% clip with 76 of 153 landing. Not bad for Gonzalez. He's landed 34 of his 92. It's just Ancaja's more active, more accurate, and I would say more powerful. Yeah, he's more powerful, Bernardo. He's kind of seem seemingly taking this round off right now. You know, he threw some big shots early. He landed, and it really didn't have a whoa. It didn't have a whole lot of effect like he wanted it to. So he's kind of taking this round off. Oh, nice right hand there from Jerwin Ancajas to close out this fifth round. We're going to schedule 12. And Kaz is doing right now. He's being the bully. Normally, he likes to fight off the back foot. He's actually pressing the action, ladies and gentlemen. He's actually looking for the knockout. This is a different Ancajas, Jerwin Ancajas. He took that round off. You mentioned it. Oh, headbutt warning there from Wayne Hedgepeth, the third man in the ring. But yeah, I mean, he wants to put on a show. He wants to prove to the other guys at 115 pounds that he, he is a force to be reckoned with. And boy, there's a lot of talent at that junior bantamweight division. You see that body shot once again from Derwin Ancajas. You could hear it. And that's really wearing down Miguel Gonzalez. Yes, it is. But you know, it's just it's just not a body shot to just thrown. It's a it's a it's a perfectly placed body shot. Like he sees the opening and he's attacking it. And he's digging. He's punching through the ribs of oh. his opponent. Nice uppercut and his opponent is hurt. And here comes Jerwin Agajas trying to finish Miguel Gonzalez here in a round six of this world championship fight. Gonzalez holding on for dear life. And down he goes, but it's not a knockdown. Very smart from Gonzalez. Very, very smart from Gonzalez. Ooh, Jerwin Ancajas swings and misses, but Gonzalez is not well. His legs are wobbly, and the left of the shot, it would have been better for him to go down, because if not, Wayne Hedgepeth had no choice but to stop this fight. That's right. You know, sometimes when you hurt fighters, we just tend to go to, to the danger. You know, sometimes you got to be in there thinking, take the knee. Recover, allow yourself another chance, a fighting chance to come back and turn the tide. We talk about the lack of experience in big fights, and that yeah. may have come back to haunt Miguel Gonzalez. When he was hurt, if he goes down by those shots, that's fine. Or even takes a knee, Take the knee. but instead, he gets pummeled. I've been in fights where, where I knew I was hurt, and I knew if I got hit with one more big shot, that I need to take that knee before that shot happens. That would have been a perfect time right there for Gonzalez to take the knee. He just 
allowed Ancajas to continue to tee off without throwing a single punch. This was smart. He took Ancajas down with them. Wayne Hedgebeth said it's not a knockdown. Right. But then what happened after that, Tim, was lack of experience. Definitely lack of experience, Bernardo. But you see Ancajas just letting his hands go, just waiting for the referee to step in and do his job to protect him. By those shots, that's fine. Or even takes a knee. Take the knee. But instead, he gets pummeled. I've been in fights where, where I knew I was hurt, and I knew if I got hit with one more big shot that I need to take that knee before that shot happens. That would have been a perfect time right there for Gonzalez to take the knee. He just allowed Ancajas to continue to tee off without throwing a single punch. This was smart. He took Ancajas down with them. Wayne Hedgebeth said it's not a knockdown. Right. But then what happened after that, Tim, was lack of experience. Definitely lack of experience, Bernardo. But you see Ancajas just letting his hands go.